It is written, How we were cut off from our eternal spirits and became flesh, thus acted independent from hearing from the Father of our eternal spirits, leaning unto our own understanding of this life and its purpose, never acknowledging Him, directing our own paths, paths based and the iniquity we were shaped in of race, cultures, and religious creeds, and not in that which was often finished before the foundation of the world and God's original intent of our very existence. The use of the word flesh must be seen as I, and the word of God truly defines it, who what is presented here will be totally misunderstood. It is written, my spirit shall not always strive with men because they had become flesh. They were spirit and become flesh. Not only in body, but in their mental attitudes and opinions cut off from God. It is written, Having begun with the spirit, are you now brought to maturity by the flesh? It is written, The flesh will not inherit the kingdom. It is written, the spirit wrestles against the flesh. It is written, in me that is in my flesh, there dwells no good thing. Paul called it all secular and religious dung. It is written, eyes have not seen, nor has the ear heard, nor has it entered into mankind's deepest heart of their double mind, subconscious mind, those things that God has prepared for those that love them and are called to his purposes and not those of the flesh. It's written further, but God has revealed what eyes have not seen, nor ears have not heard, nor could ever enter into the natural means to our deepest heart to spirit-given words that bring alive spirit-given truths found written on the Indian paper with black ink, the Bible. Beyond the letter, we seek the living word. Beyond the flesh of race, culture, religious self-willed creeds, beyond the division of male, female, God offers a new creation, new and that it is new to us. Those who hold on to what they have acquired in their lifetime cut off from their spirits. That which they have been held only to exhale, a new creation is offered and that the old is decaying. It is written, though the outward man is decaying in body and mind, the inward man is being renewed day by day. Renewed to that which they had never seen or heard. Locked up in their dormant eternal spirit. Christ in you the mind of Christ. God has formed in us this new spirit that is eternal, which fights our old spirit, one created by the spirit of this world, the spirit of this age, which is not eternal, but will come to its end. This spirit in us knows its Father, once awoken cries, Abba, Father. This spirit in us knows his voice, and follows no other. This spirit came from the Father, and to the Father it will return, if this eternal fact is discovered. It is written, Would it not be better to follow the Father of your eternal spirit and live? You're, you have fathers of your flesh, which were temple. Call no man your father, you have only one. It is written, For though you have ten thousand instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, in Christ Jesus, I have begotten you to the good news, the gospel. Wherefore, I beg you, beseech you, be followers of me. Followers of the first begotten from the dead, Jesus Christ, our Lord, the Son of God, the Son of Man, who gave his eternal life that we may have the same, thus removing the curse of death which came through the fall of Adam. Paul led them back to the father of their spirit, 
the father of the only begotten Son of God. And through his Son, they were begotten to that which they were cut off from and had become flesh subjected to death. Now that which was corruptible is revealed to be incorruptible through his incorruptible seed placed in them, Christ in them, the hope of glory. That which the first Adam had created, the second Adam, Jesus Christ our Lord, corrected doing all this and God's finished work before the world, the flesh, and the devil ever, ever entered the picture, restoring a lost glory, Christ in you, the unseen hope of glory. The Lamb of God who was slain gave his life before the foundations of the world, praise God. From once Adam left, we will return. The reconciliation back to a lost primal base, the true definition of the word reconcile. Ezekiel eleven nineteen. I will give them one heart. And I will put a new spirit within you. And I will take the stony heart out of their flesh. I will give them a heart of flesh. Galatians 2, 24. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me. And gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if Christ has come by the law. Then Christ is dead in vain. Put in us. It's a past completed action. Having present results. To the Old Testament it was hidden. Had the devil knew. He would not have crucified Jesus. After the resurrection of Jesus. Paul the apostle reveals. The hidden eternal fact. Christ in you. The unseen hope of restored glory that Adam had lost. Even in God subjecting this world to futility, this unreality of death, it was done in hope, out of love for his creation. This hope is hidden in all, Jew and Gentile, if embraced by our free will. Whosoever will saves the soul, the body, through the promise sealed in your dormant human spirit, God has set eternity within the spirit and the heart of men. The only difference between so-called saved men and so-called unsaved men is that the saved man has come to appropriate that they were saved to the finished work of God before the foundations of the world. Those unsaved either rejected altogether or tread underfoot but God had finished before the world began. And on this side of the fall, seek to cover over their inherited sin nature with sin fig leaves or go in the way of Cain, going about establishing their ideas of righteousness, they forfeit the righteousness that God had offered to his finished work. Colossians chapter 3, verse 11. There's Paul. First says that all races... All humanity has this mystery of Christ in them, yet this must not only be seen, but embraced. Or what the finished work of Christ has accomplished is lost. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, sentient, bond or free, but Christ is all and in all. Who are they all? He just gave you the list. All, Jew and Gentile, every race, culture, and creed, unbeknown to them. It was a mystery now revealed. Galatians 3, 28. There's neither Greek nor Jew. There's neither bond nor free. There's neither male or female. For you're all one in Christ Jesus. 2 Corinthians 5, 16. Wherefore, henceforth, based on these eternal facts, Know we no man after the flesh, yet though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now, henceforth, know we him no more. We know him after Christ in us, the mind of Christ in us. We don't see men and Jesus as we once saw him during the race, cultures, and creeds, and gender. After the self-willed religious flesh, 
we would see men as so-called saved after our denominational conditions and misunderstandings. Yet in our quickened spirits, by the Holy Spirit, we see all with the potential, having Christ in them, to receive this finished work of God's will and promise that he was not willing that anyone would perish. Receive this free gift of God of Christ in you which save all, yet not all will accept this finished work, sad to say. That we have to come to see that we don't get saved, we were saved. It was a past completed act with present result coming up from eternity past. If you think you get saved by any idea of performance, walking up some church aisle, signing a card according to some denominational creed, or as some call, slain in the spirit and speaking in tongues, based on the emotional moment or an intellectual initiation to, to acceptance of an assembly covenant, he have yet to touch the Christ of reality, Christ in you. Human souls will, has to, by an act of his free will, surrender all that the flesh defined above has stored in his subconscious mind to the mind of Christ which will then wrestle against this accumulated, stored, carnal mind, second self-will religious opinions, working out that which is hidden in this mind of Christ in you. It is said that we do this in fear and trembling. It is this flesh that trembles and fears because it sees its death in the rising of Christ in you. Second Peter 1.19, we have a more sure word of prophecy. Whereunto you do well that you take heed as to a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawn and a day star rises in your heart. Matthew 6, 23. But if thine heart be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. And if therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness of your race, cultures, and your creeds, and self-will, religious ideas, and opinions. That's darkness, my friend. That the light of God shine in you with the living word of God. God bless you.